podcast listeners, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Uh, intro music by Powers this week, so thank you to local Lincoln Band Powers for letting us use some sweet tunes. Thanks for tuning in. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me, as always, my co-host, who's drinking water, Will Doherty. I hope my voice is even better in HD. Tried to catch you mid, mid-gulp, <laughs> but uh, he was too quick for me. And uh, back from on assignment, uh, after a two-week absence, co-host Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. Hey. Uh, That's the first time Will's ever been told he's quick. <laughs> for uh oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're picking all that up this is okay this is gonna be super awkward because uh this is your first introduction to jimmy curve uh podcast studio 2.0 we've got condenser mics and like a real soundboard so these fucking things are sensitive they can like pick up all oh we can do like a stomp shit. thing you guys remember stomp <laughs> or like blue man group Where they, yeah Good. That's a good start. I put that on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the point is, any there could be a lot of awkward, heavy breathing and throat clearing that these microphones are going to pick up now. But hopefully, it sounds better. Uh, it's certainly easier for me to record. It's going to take an adjustment period. <laughs> it could take an adjustment period. Uh, I want to start off today by sending out a plug. It's your to our good friend James Lindsay, who's launching a web series called Comedy Liftoff, the premise of which is he has become a lift driver, and he picks people up in his car and does his stand-up jokes to them while he's driving them to their destination. So that's I've got that right. Yeah, that's yes, I've seen it. It's yeah. very funny. It's on YouTube. Uh, check out the first video on YouTube. You can also check it out on Facebook. You can follow Comedy Liftoff on Facebook. Uh, Jimmy Lins, James Lindsay. And do remember that Lyft, uh, like the company, is spelled with a Y so that they could copyright it. <laughs> right. And then he could steal their copyright. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's Comedy <laughs> Liftoff, L-Y-F-T, is how you spell Comedy Liftoff. It's your blood. Awesome, let's get on with the show. We've got a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, we're gonna... Do a little bit. I feel like it's a uh, podcast standard practice to do a sort of year end review thing at this point, but we only got started recording in September, so we don't have a full year to review. Uh, so I thought we'd look ahead to 2015 and give us, give a, uh, give you our thoughts on some of the main issues that we want to uh, talk about moving forward. We're going to give you the definitive Jimmy Curb stance on some issues. Uh, also, we're going to have a movie review segment today. Josh and I both saw The Interview, starring Seth Rogen and James Franco, so we're going to talk about that movie. But right now, let's get to our guest for the night, uh, one Grant Parsons. Grant Parsons! Hey, hey. guys! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm glad you guys got uh, all new equipment for me. I'm glad my agent got to you back, <laughs> finally get me on the show. Now you guys have some professional shit. I'm it was in your writer. Yeah, yeah, same with the PBR. Thank you. The last the last podcast I did, I had to bring my own beer, and I thought it was very unprofessional. That's super weak. You know what is funny with the beer? Like, that was a spur of the moment decision today, because like I always have. Was it really? Well, I always have bottles of water set out on the tables, uh, just because if you're gonna, you know, podcast is an hour of talking, and if you're gonna talk, I think it's polite to provide people with water. Uh, but we were so we were at the Russ's Market. And I was like, you know, Grant's coming in. I bet Grant would like a can of beer. Yeah, man. Thank <laughs> you. Like, That's very thoughtful. You know what? I don't think Russ's sells weed. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you at uh, Russ's on um, uh, 16th and Washington? That no. Russ's? No, okay. no. No, yeah. That Russ's sell. sells that's, weed. Yeah, that's murder. It's murder Russ's. That's what the, like, the nickname for it is. My little sister lives like right across the street from there, too. It's just like... <laughs> it's terrifying. What murder Russes? Yeah, <laughs> the occasional dumpster body at that place. You or? walk in, they're just like, "What you need? I can get it." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the service is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I saw somebody buy on Thanksgiving. I saw somebody buying. It was a family. It wasn't a family. It was a dude and like his wife or something. And they had like and the kids they stole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They had like 30 boxes of Tostitos party pizzas. I was like, that's your Thanksgiving. Like, they're like, I was, 
I was there that day because they had a 12 hour sale for Totino's <laughs> for 75 cents. Uh, and in my defense, I only bought 10. <laughs> Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs> Is that Brad Stewart? Yeah, yeah, Brad Stewart. That's awesome. Uh, Grant Parsons, you are a local Lincoln, Nebraska comedian for the time being. Yeah. You're for... leaving us. You're moving to California. Correct. But uh, the th- what I know about you is that you run a shitload of shows here in Lincoln. At least you have yeah. over from the last, what, two years? Yeah, been two and a half. Putting on shows, promoting shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, like a lot of them, like you did. Uh, let's see. The movie interruption show. I don't know. What, what did you call uh, that? Flick You. Flick You. That was at the Vega. You do Zoolarious every Sunday with Still Brad Stewart. Yep. Still going on. Yep. Uh, you've done stuff at the Bourbon. You brought in Doug Benson. Uh, am I missing anything? Yeah, we did a lot with the Bourbon. We had Sean Patton there. Um, a lot of Vega, the Club Vega, some people like to call it. The Cask Comedy Open Mic, um, <laughs> which was... The short-lived. The short-lived. Yeah. It probably went on for, what, six months? It, too, long. too long. Too long. Too <laughs> long. Um, yeah. Just... Talk to me about promoting comedy in Lincoln, Nebraska, because... We have a very, very young comedy scene. Yeah. And honestly, I, n- not many people in this town know we have one at all. Right. Because we've had Duffy's for a long time. Yeah, like 20 plus years. And that's always like when you tell people you do comedy in Lincoln, they always ask, oh, do you do the Duffy's? Oh, right. yeah, Duffy's. So I've been there. That's like a comedy club, right? And so, <laughs> no, it's just a bar where they have open micers. On. Well, D- Duffy's was once voted the number one college bar in America by some place. Yeah. You guys you remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. That was like four years ago or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, every Monday they have an open microphone. Oh, oh. <laughs> an open <laughs> microphone. <laughs> an open microphone. It's just one microphone sitting in an open box in the middle of the bar. It's like you can go and play with it. No, they have an open mic every Monday. But uh, in terms of that's all that most people know about Lincoln Comedy. So like, I mean, what's it like? How did you get started promoting shows other places? What's that process like? Basically, I came, I moved, I started doing comedy when I was living in San Diego, and then I started, like, doing it in California in a bigger scene. Where are you originally from? I'm from here. Okay. So I moved out there when I was 18, and uh, started doing comedy there, and I only did comedy there for, like, a few months, and, like, I fell in love with it, like, I realized I really like comedy, but I was also going up to LA and doing, like, a comedy workshop, and then I just, like, started doing open mics, and then I realized this is fucking terrifying i am terrible i don't want anybody to see me so that's why i kind of moved back to nebraska and then i came back here and like even going to duffy's like um i I couldn't even go to duffy's because i was 19 (laughs) and like they wouldn't let me in like literally i'd show up every week for like five weeks in a row with my little my little notepad I was also be like kind of fucked up too. I think that's why they also <laughs> want to let me in. Jordy, who we just heard, his band is Powers. He's the drummer for that band. You know Jordan from yeah, uh, Jordan Elfers. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, good dude. Yeah, he denied me like five weeks in a row, <laughs> and then finally one time I'm like, dude, I just want to tell jokes, just please. And he's just like, all right, cool, just don't drink. And uh, yeah, I started just doing the. But that was the main thing. It's like I wanted more stage time. Right. And so to get more stage time in Lincoln, you had to you had to create that stage time. Um, whether that be like starting an open mic, um, trying to book a show, um, and what, like, that, like, I don't, I guess I don't know what that means. Like when you say starting a thing, you know, starting an open mic, booking a show, how, how do you even know who to talk to, who to call? Do you just go into bars and say, Hey, I want to, can I have, can I have thursday night here kind of yeah that's kind of what you have to do like i emailed the bourbon forever like i did one show with them that i just got booked on because i had my mom's friend was like i just moved back to nebraska and this was even before i started trying to go to duffy's and it was ross broccoli um was like he does comedy like once a year he's hilarious why is it that every name dropped in the show sounds fake ross broccoli (laughs) i think that's like a Stage name, maybe? right? It's, or, is that his I, actual name? I'm pretty name? sure that's his that, real name. Yeah. It's when not a, broccoli. It's B R O C K L E Y. When a guy broccoli, yeah, when a guy checks into a seedy hotel to have an affair, he signs Ross Broccoli. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that name sounds like to me. Anyways, but yeah, I got booked on the, the very important man, the bourbon for that show. So after I did that show, I was like constantly emailing them, like, "Hey, I want to, I want to put on a show here." But then it wasn't until like a year later that they hit me up and let me do it. Um. 
but yeah, that's like basically how you start shows. You just just email persistence, people. persistence. Yeah, the same way that Andy Dufresne expanded the library at Shawshank, sending a letter every week. <laughs> yep, until eventually the state allocated him the funds. Never mind. <laughs> And that's how you start a comedy show. <laughs> so, and, and since then, you've just kind of taken that and, and you've gone around to basically every place in downtown Lincoln and just like the the whiskey, what's that uh, whiskey bar down there? Uh, it's like all wood. Oh, the single barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. did it. Brad was doing a show there for a monthly show and then they wanted to do it more. So the owner came to me and he's like, hey, we want to do this bi weekly. And then that show, it was on Wednesdays and that bar, I mean, it's, they've got good food and stuff, but the, it's such a big room. It's huge. It's huge. huge. The sound's terrible. And just like they weren't, we weren't bringing enough people. And that's another thing is like promoting the show. It's like yeah. you can book a show and like just hope, cross your fingers that people are going to show up, but you really just need to like get people there. And that's the hard part. Mm-hmm. It's like you can only hound people on Facebook and your friends and family for so long until <laughs> right. they're just like, okay, really? Another, we've another. Ca- we've kind of talked about this before how doing comedy is sort of different from playing in a band where like if you play in a band a lot of your friends will come to every show yeah but in comedy once they've seen you do it once or, they've kind of seen it they're like you're doing the same bit really it's been a year you're still doing that joke it's just right. like yeah because it works if like yeah. you might have heard heard this n- joke but this joe schmo over here hasn't and he might right. like it you know what i mean yeah. but like that's the difference you guys probably obviously talked about this with bands is like you want to hear the hits when you go see a band. Right. You want to oh, bro, play the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play Freebird, you know? <laughs> like. Right, right. It, yeah, it, yeah. They're like, if Aerosmith had never written another song after 1983, yeah. they would be, they would still be selling out arenas. Yeah. It'd be fine. But yeah. Uh, so uh, has there come a time where you've just been like, you've gotten so disillusioned with it because nobody's coming to shows that you're just like, fucking, what am I doing? Yeah, I think about that every day. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> not not in terms of your comedy, but just in oh, terms booking of shows, promoting and, shows in yeah. Lincoln, like getting people to come. Like uh, Joey Zimmerman ran a pretty sweet show at Knickerbockers for a long time. Now Ryan Dowd is doing it. It's a good room. It's yeah. it's a good show. It's so hard to get people to come to Knickerbockers right. to watch comedy on a Thursday night. Yeah, and they've got thirty five cent tacos. The room really isn't that bad. It's separate from the bar, which is ideal. But the sound is um, good. Yeah, I mean. It's just getting people there. It's getting people interested. Unless you yeah. have, like, hey, something to promote besides, like, comedy. Like, hey, we've got a guy who's got credits. Then the show usually turns out to be good. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring in somebody like Doug Benson or th- one of these bigger names. They're going to sell tickets on their own. But then just getting people. Th- like, a lot of people, I put it this way in Lincoln, they don't know that they're comedy fans. Right. Or, like, going out to see live comedy because there's not really that many opportunities that they know about to do it. Mm-hmm. There's not a funny bone in Lincoln. Right. Like, if you want to go see comedy in Omaha, everyone's like, oh, you go to the Omaha Funny Bone. That's an establishment just for comedy. In Lincoln, mm-hmm. besides Duffy's. They don't have a club. There's no club. Yeah, right. you, and you tell people, they're like, oh, Lincoln must be good because the, the university's there. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. For one thing, first does of it, all. Does anybody you, promote to them? UNL is not an artsy-fartsy school. They don't <laughs> right. appreciate comedy. They're not going to want to. Like, it's all about getting fucked up and banging bitches. Like that's <laughs> that's what it's all that's about. That's what it's all man. about. And right. comedy, that does not happen. Josh, At least the banging bitches. Part. Josh, we just found your drop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's you know all about that. getting um, fucked up and banging bitches. But you know what I mean, like the University of Colorado or whatever. Like that's kind of an artsy, kind of hipster school. Like the and you'll get walk in traffic for something like uh, a comedy show, you know, and it, it, and people are more supportive. Not around here. It's about football. And, yeah, and that's another well, thing. Yeah. Part of the reason, <laughs> part of the reason, um, it, it it doesn't work very well in Lincoln as a college town is that you're right. It's not like an art town. It's not like a music town, which means that like all the places that are to put on shows are bars, which means you lose like three fourths of your supposed college audience anyway because they're still under twenty one. Right. Yeah. Uh, I I I lived down in Austin for a little while, and one of the great things about Austin was that there are a lot of like weird little theater spaces where they're not bars. They're just weird little theater spaces. Yeah. Uh, So you could have all ages shows or 18 plus shows and be able to like say, hey, you know, that are used to advertising to the college kids that are saying, you know, hey, you can come down to this and it's something you can go see. We don't really have a good space like that. 
Yeah. There's a, yeah, I mean, there's venues. Like, going back, there is a cool, like, music scene growing, and I feel like that's kind of pushing the comedy, like, forward with it, like, Lincoln Calling this year. Mm-hmm. Um, they, we, they added two comedy shows. They've been doing Lincoln Calling, which is Lincoln, uh, some, or, what is it in October? It's a music festival they do, and it's mainly local. Um, but they added comedy this year. They've been doing that for eleven years, and this is the first year they added comedy. So it is catching on, and I think more and more people are finding out about it. But it's just uh, keeping keeping that going. Right. So it's a great time to leave and go to California <laughs> <laughs> to bail and <laughs> build something up. And fuck, not to say that I was go fuck yourself. I just did comedy <laughs> and then leave. So, uh, yeah, so you're going to California to pursue the dream. Yeah, yeah. Watch the dream crash and burn. Why not? As um, Why not now? I mean, I'm 22 yeah. years old. I got nothing. I have no kids. Yep. I have no financial yep. responsibilities. Um, Too young to know better? Yeah, probably. Now, like, yeah, but you got... When, when we had Drew Bulky in here a couple of weeks ago, we were like, so what are you going to do out in California? And he... He laid out like a six point success plan that I did not expect him to have. I was like, I thought you were just going to go pass out on a beach and hope success happened. But yeah, I hope I want to hear his six point <laughs> success plan because I haven't heard shit from him. Well, you, but you guys have you guys have like developed a pilot uh, for TV, like a full twenty two minute pilot. Or yeah, something. yeah. Well, me and Drew, Drew. Uh... Because you had a web series idea, right? Is that the same yeah, thing? Yeah, it's that... the same thing. It was originally a web series idea, um, which we still might put on the internet. Um, but yeah, we're writing it as a 22-minute to sell to network television. Um, but yeah, that's that's the beautiful thing of having like these side projects, too, rather than just doing stand-up. It's cool because I before I met Drew... Um, I really wasn't doing anything like that, and that's mm-hmm. just a diff- different way to like write, I guess. Too, it's just like having a writing partner instead of where stand up sure. is completely on your own. So right. it's well, a- it's just better too to get involved in as many different disciplines as you can. Like, yeah. if you only do stand up, it's going to be sort of limiting. Like, that's why you know I try to do sketch and improv, and well, like a podcast is a different thing. Yeah, it's Any, an art form. Anything you can do to get in front of people or to get your voice out there, right. I think, is important. But yeah, yeah, just like uh, sitting down with him too, and we've been writing this uh, this pilot, and we're almost done with it. And it just feels so good because each time we go back to it, and it's like we're bouncing off off ideas of each other, and each time we go back and revise, it's like oh, it's getting funnier and funnier. These characters are developing. Yeah, I ran into you and Drew at a coffee shop, and my thought was, this isn't a bar. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are Drew and Grant doing here? We you were like working on a thing. Yeah, <laughs> we actually tried to write at a bar for like three, three or four months, and we did not get shit done. We were just like, you know, it's in a bar. Like we try to go to Jake's, which is a cigar bar. I mean, that's a little bit. It, it's cooler. a pretty cool place. You would think. It would be conducive to yeah, that kind of thing. But it's like there's still music playing. There's still you run into that's a shitty thing about being a regular bar patron somewhere is you're gonna know somebody at any point while you're right. in the bar. Um so we never got shit done. And then just one day we went to a coffee house, sat down in the corner, and fucking spent like five hours on this thing, and it's turning out to be um something we really like. And what and what's your process right for developing that? Just go going through paragraph by paragraph and rewriting it or do you just do whole chunks at a time? Yeah, chunks at a time, but each time we we go back, we re- revisit and we go through the whole thing just like we'll just read it to ourselves, not to ourselves, we'll kind of go out loud and like you revise it as you go. It's like one day you might have a, what you thought was a great idea. And then you go back and like oh it's fine. And that's a nice thing of having a writing partner too. Whether the stand up is like you can be like, do you like this? And you're like, yeah, no, I don't fucking like it. Get rid of it. <laughs> you got to be honest with yeah, each other. Yeah, and it just naturally kind of happens. Right. Um, that's what's nice about having a wife is that uh, yeah. yeah, they're pretty honest with you when you're doing something stupid. Like <laughs> my wife is a pretty good barometer for my dumb bullshit, like my road rage. Yeah. You know. Yeah, or it's just like uh, it's Monday night, and my wife's like, uh, "Yeah, you are you going to do comedy?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Oh, you're still doing that?" <laughs> <laughs> Did she really say that kind of stuff? Sort Fuck of. you. Yeah, like passive, <laughs> passive aggressive. Yeah, it's where like, oh, that's cute. Man, all three of you guys are married. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the the weird thing about. So this is curve. is that why you started this just to like get away from the wives for just like an <laughs> an extra hour on Mondays before you go and do Duffy's. <laughs> it was just a coincidence, actually, that we're all married and 
We all married and no kids. And have glasses and are overweight. And the, the similarities continue. Yeah. And we're both awesome at podcasting, right, guys? Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, go check out Grant Parsons Sunday night at uh, Zularius before he leaves town. It'll be one of your last chances to catch him. Yeah, probably just these next two weeks, hopefully. And do you have anything else coming up that you're booked on? Um, No. If you're listening to this and you book stuff in Lincoln and Omaha, book me. Come, come to, come to uh, Duffy's on Monday night and buy him drinks. Yeah, come, come, <laughs> yeah, come get me drunk. I'm trying to save money, guys. <laughs> so I'm you, Grandpa. Like you've already quit drinking it. Like at least two or three points that I remember. Like in this past, like month or when since you've known. Oh me. no, yeah, yeah, since I've known you. Yeah, I've and tried. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the fact that you you're you said you're 22, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you're already like an alcoholic. I, it it feels like you like you you seem to have a lot of shame in that, but I feel like what's really happening is like you're just ahead, yeah. like you're just ahead of the game. Like we're not gonna realize that we have a problem and like start fixing our shit until we're like forty five. You're just doing it now, and then by the time you're like twenty five, like you're gonna be Chris Hardwick. We're actually a weird anthropology <laughs> chart of boozy comedy because I'm thirty six. So behold your future. Yeah. I was an alcoholic at 22. I think everybody kind of naturally, yeah. when you're young, you just drink a lot. I think that's how it goes. But that's, yeah, the reason why I said that so much is like, oh, I'm going to quit drinking is I think deep down I do know that I probably do have like some, some kind of compulsive. I like to drink. I drink pretty much every night. Um, and I know that's kind of why I'm moving out of this town too. It's such a college based town. And it's like, well, there's nothing else to do. I can only get up on stage two nights a week. What am I going to do with the other five nights a week? I'm probably just going to go out and get drunk. Nebraska is far too liberal for you. So you're moving to California <laughs> to be more conservative with my, <laughs> with my partying. And, and you're 22. So there's no, it's too late. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're planning ahead. If anything, you're being really responsible about your addiction and you're getting, yeah. you know what I mean? Because you know, like someday when you're almost thirty, you're gonna be like, "Oh, it's too late for this. It's too late for that." You're, you're, you're doing stuff where, like, I'm, I'm never fucking, I'm never moving. It's too late. It's too <laughs> right, late yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. I'm, you know, you're only like twenty eight, but you, you, you're a homeowner, and I got, a, I got, I got one of them fucking wives. <laughs> And I, on that note, I told her it was funny because we were driving to <laughs> the car and, uh, you know, something came up about like doing comedy or whatever. And I was like, yeah, if I wasn't if I wasn't married, I'd probably like try and do road stuff or try and get out somewhere else and do comedy, you know, but I'm married and I don't I no longer have hopes and dreams. <laughs> so, like, I, I just think about it every now and then. And you're telling her like, yeah, yeah, this? yeah. And she's like, yeah, you know what? If I wasn't married and then she went in the whole, you know, what she would do if she wasn't married. Yeah. Like she, oh, like she, oh, you like, were looking for that. It's basically like we were both like, yeah. You know, it would make me more happier, but I can't be like that because we're married. Yeah, you know, I travel around more and stuff. And invite me to the divorce party, man. I want to. I want to. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't like. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're on the. I forgot. We're on pod. We're podcasting. Well, here's. <laughs> I, and your You're, mom's like your biggest fan. Josh, Josh had a real moment there. Where yeah. he, it's unloading. I'm some like, shit. oh yeah, Here's, this is being recorded. What are we talking about? Here's the best thing about that: the fact that your uh, unsupportive wife never listens to the podcast means you get to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, I was like listening to the podcast, and she's like, "Oh, this is good. This is funny. What are you listening to?" I'm like, "That's my podcast." Like, you know what I mean? Like, anyways, I think she's like the most has listened to. 15 minutes out of everything <laughs> of the yeah. podcast. Well, that's 15 glorious minutes that she'll never get back. She was like, yeah, Will's really funny on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves Will. Uh, it's... Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Can we take a or break? Put a stop to that right now. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... That, that's good. We're going to move on. We're going to do uh, a new segment where I review a movie. Jimmy Kerr Movie Review. I saw the interview. The interview is in the news. The interview is written and directed by Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen, starring James Franco and Seth Rogen, uh, released by Sony Entertainment. Uh, and it was pulled from theaters because... North Korea 
threatened to destroy the infidels in American movie theaters if we deigned to show that film. Uh, two days later, it was then released again anyway. So the plot of the movie, for anyone who doesn't know, is uh, James Franco plays a talk show host named Dave Skylark. Seth Rogen plays his producer. And they find out that Kim Jong-un of North Korea is a big fan of their show, and they set up an interview with him. Uh, the U.S. government finds out that they get, they're going to go to North Korea to be alone in a room with King, Kim Jong-un, and they ask Seth Rogen and James Franco to assassinate him. Then wackiness ensues. If you've seen the trailer, you've basically seen the movie. I won't release any spoilers here. Uh, I thought the movie was pretty funny. Jo uh, Joshua, you saw it as well? I liked it. Yeah, J James Franco was fucking great. He was really funny. Yeah. I, I mean... I, I watched it with a couple of friends, and we were pretty drunk at the time. But I laughed. I laughed. The first 45 minutes of the film is really just goofball shit. It's just funny gags, and I laughed a lot. The last hour is sort of an action comedy. There's a lot more sort of typical action stuff, and it gets pretty, pretty just silly at that point. But I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, I give it a like a like a B minus maybe is where I strong B. Yeah, strong B. So, but here, here's the more important thing about the film. So, a Seth Rogen, James Franco comedy has an expectation for how it's going to do in the theater. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a $40 million opening weekend. Uh, stoners are going to like it. No parents will go see it. <laughs> no kids are going to go see it. Uh, however... Everyone in America is going to watch the interview. I think it's going to have the most, it's going to be the most viewed film of the past 30 years because they've sold it as it's patriotic. <laughs> you have to watch this movie if you love America. Did Sony fake the whole threat? Like, it, it, maybe, should I give some background? Do people not know about I think most people. No. So so Sony claims that hackers from North Korea, right, hacked into their whatever, Sony archive, whatever, and threatened to bomb theaters if they released this movie because their beloved Kim Jong-un was being lampooned. So they pulled the movie and then, in an act of patriotic heroism, decided to release it anyway to say... Fuck you! North Korea. Uh, <laughs> like, for example, over Christmas break, I was talking to... I talked to my parents, uh, Mary's sister, her parents. They, Not one of those people would ever in a million years see a Seth Rogen <laughs> comedy. And they were all going to watch the interview. Oh, wow. Like, everybody in my family was like, well, I guess I better go see it. I think... I don't think they're... I, just because it's the most watched thing ever doesn't mean it's necessarily successful. I mean, they have to make money. It's also going to be the most pirated thing ever on the internet. You know what I mean? And yeah. that doesn't make it successful. That means most people most people have seen it. doesn't mean they paid for it. Apparently, from what I heard, one of the ways you could watch the movie while you're watching it, you just copy the link and paste it on your Facebook page, and whoever clicked on it can watch it for free. They did that by mistake. Well, that's that, this is one of the other weird things about this film. When they weren't going to release it, they pulled it out of theaters. And then, like, three days later, released it in a select theaters. So it was given a limited theatrical release. Weren't It wasn't Sony who, like, Sony didn't pull the release, per se, wasn't it? It was the, the theater theaters. chains yeah. who refused to show the movie. Uh, is that like, what happened? Yeah. I believe so. Uh, it, it is my understanding because, like, Sony losing the theatrical release money is a huge loss for them because, like, you you make so much more money selling individual tickets at, like, theater prices. Like, that's where the... They, I think they could potentially had, would have made more money if they would have done it right. I think the way they did it was awful. You need You need just one place, one website that's the only place you could watch it. And, it's, and Sony o owns and operates it. You pay $6 to see it. But on the same page, you, you do a whole campaign about, like, a fuck you to North Korea, basically. Like, let's stick it to North Korea. Everybody watch this movie. People would pay $6 to see it because they want to see it. Not only on that, in the same site, you just sell a fuck ton of merchandise. 
just like, the, <laughs> but you'd get it all in one place. That's the way, the only way you could make that successful. Yeah, wasn't it on YouTube? Can yeah, it was on yeah. YouTube. This other fucking site nobody's ever been on. I, I got it from. Uh, I downloaded it from Xbox Live. Xbox Live, yeah, but but I paid five bucks. Yeah, they just they didn't sell it as in like, hey, North Korea, fuck you. Well, That's how what many? They, but how many movies ever have had a simultaneous? Because this was a big production. Like the money was spent on this film. This was not an indie film. No, but it was released in theaters simultaneously released on, on demand. Internet, yeah, like you where you could down. Like I've never no nothing's ever been done like that before. So. We have no idea yeah. what the results are going to be. The truth is we don't know how much money this could make or if it won't make any money at all. All I know is that a shitload of people who would not have seen this movie are now going to watch it. Just the, because of controversy around it getting pulled. And the, the amount – and even though people who live most of their lives online right now, which is everyone younger than me, it, it, it seems like – Something being pirated a bunch of times, like, is going to kill something financially. But it really, it's really such a small percentage of people still that know how to do that. Like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, am I old and out of touch? I don't know. I'm most people, though. Yeah, you're too old to know that you could just Google, how do I steal movies off the internet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can do that, but then I can't follow those directions. Like, I don't know how to fucking BitTorrent something. I know that... Somebody says you download a BitTorrent client and then you find like you've already lost me. It's a lot of yeah, it's a lot of steps usually. Like I, I but like but if I have trouble doing that and I'm pretty technically savvy and I can figure out most things, I'm exaggerating. I could find out how to pirate a movie, but like my parents can't. See, I'd be more inclined to watch it knowing that I can just watch it on the internet right now. You right. know, rather than taking the time going to the theater, oh, I have to drive to the theater. I have to spend seven dollars at the theater, nine dollars, whatever it is. I'm gonna buy concessions. Like that's a fucking. That's gonna be a lot more money rather than oh, it's it's one a.m. I, mean, I still want to stay up, and I can just pay five dollars and get this, rent this right now. So well, it's not I, like it's not like people don't fucking sneak into theaters either. Well, like, they they've been talking a long time about how long is it gonna take until just everything is on the internet. Like, no, I don't. I hate going to the movie theater. I hate I hate everybody in the movie theater. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I like going to the movie theater, seeing it on a big screen. But everybody's got huge fucking screens on their house. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. the thing is, you can pay six dollars for, and then you can watch it for forty eight hours. I mean, you can invite ten people over and have a showing at your house. Those are all. Those ten people are people that would have to buy a seven dollar movie. Yeah, but ticket. nine of those people weren't going to go see it at the theater. So few people were going to go see this movie in the theater. It, it seems like a lot. Like we, it, it seems like if this movie gets pirated online a, a hundred thousand times, or I don't know what the numbers are. I'm just making up a number. And each of those times, it's viewed by five people. That's five hundred thousand people see it illegally. There are still going to be like forty million people seeing the movie instead of. 500,000 total. Like, there's still so many more people who are going to be watching this movie. I think what helps them with this movie is, like, overseas viewings. Because, like, typically, it, this is an international thing that it's, that's all over the world that people are talking about. They're getting more publicity overseas than they've any movie that probably ever, ever. Yeah. So, I, so they'll, they'll get a lot of money overseas than they more than they typically would, I would think. I think the opening weekend for this movie was going to be 30 or $40 million, and I think they're going to make somewhere closer to half a billion off of it. Jesus. Based on certain. what they've done. Just, just on the promotion. Because everybody's going to see it. Everybody. So do you think it was like a huge... That, that would literally be the best PR stunt <laughs> pulled off. Yeah, I think it was company. brilliant. I, I, Do you think it was, though? Because they also had a lot of negative stuff leading up to that. They had like So much of it doesn't make sense. Because if you're Sony, do you really want to put out negative stuff out, out there that you're talking shit about um, Kevin Hart saying he's a money whore? Because those are stuff that came with the leaks leading up to this. There's but so the much emails, other, right. Stuff like that. Do you make that up? Or do you go to Kevin Hart and do you say, hey, man, we're going to call you a money-grabbing whore. Can we give you a little bit money <laughs> to say this? No, I think that stuff was probably real. But I, I think the part where, like, a North Korean hacker threatened. They well, made that up, wasn't, you think? Wasn't the threat may have been real, but Sony didn't fucking take it seriously. Even if even if that happened, it, it could have been one guy who was just fucking around. Like, 
most hackers are just fucking around for the lulls. Like they don't really care. <laughs> they don't. Trolling. They don't. They don't have. They don't have nukes. Kim Jong Un didn't hack into Sony Pictures. Like, even if one guy did that, I don't think Sony took it seriously for a second. And Kim- I don't think anyone thought. Like, first of all, giant corporations are happy to have a a theater full of 35 people explode if it means it'll make them money. Like, corporations don't give a fuck about that. I don't know about that. I think the theaters, I think the theaters who pulled the movie did have a very good reason. Insurance policy. Because, oddly enough, might there have been a reason why theaters might be nervous about crazy people coming in and killing people? Did that happen recently at the Dark Knight? <laughs> yeah, but that's a totally different thing. Although, no, if, you, it was. if you look at crime statistics, Asians is like the lowest. Like, they hardly ever commit crimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's true. I'm not... That's it. That's not a, being racist. It's not even a negative stereotype. Nope. It's it's being reverse racist. <laughs> oh, is well, that racist? Well, the... Yeah, the... I'm just... It's statistics, guys. It's like science, right? But the idea that... The North Korean government was going to start blowing up American theaters is preposterous. It's preposterous. That would in no way would that happen. Right. And and the idea that uh like Islamic extremists are gonna fly a plane into a building is also preposterous. No, it's not. That is that's a completely different thing. That's not a government declaring war right. through That's terrorism. True. That's an entirely different thing. That's a small group of crazy people doing crazy bullshit. Right. And I guess the 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 stated threat was supposed to be from the government. Right. But oh, although really? but it but from the from the perspective of the people pulling the movie, like it does only take a small group of crazy people. But but that's such a ridiculous thing to do. Like if like no country would be like Open up their, open up our arms and say, destroy us with nuclear <coughs> armaments, America. Or even, we will justify <coughs> it for you. Or even, or even on a smaller scale, you're pissing us off. So our retribution is going to be bombing your movie theaters. That's such a ridiculous thing for a country to do. Like, why would it? Right. And as we all know, North Korea's never done anything ridiculous. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I like to think that Kim Jong Un was like upset that I was getting pulled. Right, like he like, he was actually like a big fan of the movie. Like he's like, ah, oh, like he was just super excited because he thought he was gonna meet James Franco and Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> I just think like uh, like North Korea. If he did find like five guys and he's like, all right, listen, guys, we're gonna send you in there, and if they play this movie, you blow up the theater, right? And then they would get to America and be like, thank God, I'm not in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So what are you saying? When they got when they got to America, it's like okay, we have to destroy the theater that's playing the movie. Which one has the movie? (laughs) Wait, how many theaters are there? (laughs) We only have one. (laughs) Or they they go in to blow it up, and they're like, you know what? Kim's kind of like that. (laughs) (laughs) They actually watch it. Yeah, they (laughs) sit down. (laughs) So, like, what what are you saying though? Like, do you think there was a real threat of theaters being? Attack? I I don't think there was a marketing conspiracy. That seems unlikely to me. But at the same time, like because like, companies do try that shit all the time. I I feel like I feel like opening yourselves up to like creating a false threat of a terrorist threat of violence opens yourself up to too many legal problems, like from the United oh, States I, I, government. I think I think somebody could have threatened that at some point. I think that could be legit. I think it's all real. We just took it too serious, we right? T- we, we, and I, and I, and I think that I think that Sony Pictures for sure capitalized on it to make money, right? Or or not? Or is it just? Or is it just the most? Because ha- they they are going to make money off of. Oh this. yeah, well of course, yeah, they definitely. You know, is it just a happy I'm, weird coincidence? Here's for them? the thing: I'm not that sh- I'm not that positive that that's true though. Like you're right, more people are going to see the movie, but it goes back to what Josh said before, like. I don't know that the lost ticket sales of the opening weekend of like the all the theaters that pulled the movie, I'm not sure that they actually make that back in video on demand sales. Yeah, but all of those theaters are going to carry the film eventually. It's just going to be a week late. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's going to have a widespread theatrical release. It, it, it's going to Nobody's going to go to it, though. They're going to be like, yeah, I already saw that on, or I already ripped that off online. I think a lot of people, my parents will. 
<laughs> because they're patriots. <laughs> like, the entire state of Florida doesn't know how to download things online. Like, they're going to go to the theater. The movie costs, like, $30 million to make or something. Again, you're talking about everybody, everybody over the age of 40 is going to go to the theater to see it. You and, think? Yeah. Oh, is gonna, if they're going to see it, they're going to go to the theater. Right. Yeah. They don't know how to fucking Definitely. download something. And, like, it, like, they don't want to sign up for a YouTube account. I mean, that's <clears throat> because that's like how we've all found that it's easiest to do things. You forget that, like, we're still a huge minority of the country that, like, thinks it's super easy to just stream movies online. It's that's still not. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm overestimating. I, I don't know. I think after people hear about this on the podcast, uh, the box office numbers are just going to crush. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, we've we've solved the movie issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> we've attacked it from every angle. We've explored it uh, every nook and cranny of the interview. Uh, tweet, here, tweet, tweet them your thoughts, you guys. It was <laughs> it was. Uh, but at its heart, it was pretty funny. Uh, I'll say it was pretty funny. It was good. I just saw the the one scene that they released on online with a. Uh, Eminem, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a pretty <laughs> that was a pretty good part yeah. of the movie. That's that's like the very beginning. That's like the <laughs> opening five minutes. That's awesome. Uh, and it's pretty it's pretty funny. You know about the movie is like I laughed a lot at James Franco. I thought his he, he that character he played was hilarious. Well, the, then Seth Rogen's character, yeah. I was like, you know, it's just well, Seth the first, Rogen. The first fifty minutes of the film is just a pure satire of pop culture. Right. And it's really funny and it's pretty clever. And James Franco plays it pretty cleverly because he's basically doing a caricature of um, the type of television personality that people find that, 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 that is very popular despite not having a ton of substance. I'm going to say Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Ryan Seacrest. Uh, more of a Carson Daly. He's like sort of a Carson Daly type character because it's an interview talk show. Tell me what the difference is between <laughs> Ryan Seacrest and Carson Daly. <laughs> right. I, Success. <laughs> style of show. <laughs> it's the okay. style of show is right. only I was, what I was talking about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, it, it's really, it's really parts of everything though because he's like half Carson Daly, half Geraldo Rivera. Like okay. that's the type of thing that he's doing because it's sort of, you know, partially Jimmy Fallon. Like it's part of all of that stuff, but it, he's, he, it's a really cool way that he sort of lampoons all of it in one character. You'll find the first 45 minutes clever. The last hour is not clever. It's just goofball stuff, but still pretty fun. All right, well, we've done that. Let's move it on. Move along. Move it on. I need to work on transitions on this show because I just... <laughs> I, when I get done talking about something, I'm like, yeah, let's... Uh, do we need to d pause for a minute or... The issues. The issues. We're going to discuss the issues. Mm, the Moving issues. The issues. And we're going to give our definitive stance on them. The Jimmy Curves definitive stance on the issues moving. I feel like it's podcast wrote to do sort of a year in review uh, around this time. Like I said, we started broadcasting, podcasting. Uh, in September, and so we've only got three months there. So I thought, let's just look ahead and see for the year 2015, you know, based on what we've seen in the year 2014, moving forward, if a topic comes up in the year 2015, people are going to want to know where we stand. They're going to want to know our thoughts on it, right? Yes. So, so let's get into some of these things. Let's talk about some of this stuff. Uh, topic one. Domestic violence. For or against? Hmm. I I'll start us off against. That's a tough one. We uh. saw the video of <laughs> Ray Rice punching out his fiance. That was a big news story. Whatever happened with that? Is he still play for the NFL? He got reinstated, but he's not on a team right now. He can oh. he can get signed. But he's still is he still getting paid and all that? <laughs> well, the hit, the problem with Ray Rice in terms of the NFL right now is that he's not very good, mm. but he'll he'll play for somebody next year. So the, the answer <laughs> the answer is against. Right? Yeah, yeah I think everyone definitely now, against. Let let me just play devil's advocate here for <laughs> please, a moment. Please don't. <laughs> please don't. Please 
please don't. We got a lot to go through here. Domestic violence, the definitive stance of the Jimmy Curve is against. Agree. Ag against. Concur. Now, <laughs> we, we do need to address the fact that the Jimmy Curve stance on whether or not Jimmy could win a fight with literally every woman in the world is non-relevant because it would never happen. Yeah, I'm totally against that. I am also against that. <laughs> Topic number two, Ebola. Official Jimmy Curve stance, Joshua. I'm I'm definitely against it. Uh, I'm gonna say I support anything that just results in there being less people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you're for more um, Ebola? I, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take your stance. Right. On that well, <laughs> which is also why I share your opinion in not being for domestic violence. This is not enough deaths. <laughs> now this is crazy because I'm gonna come down right between you two on Ebola. Non-issue. Right, oh, was yeah. A, it was a fake thing. I mean... No, it was I mean, a real thing, but it was, kind a of media, it was a media scare you know, kind of thing. In other parts of the world it was, but yeah. not in the United Did, States. I, don't, I think one, per, one person yeah. died from yeah. Ebola in America. Yeah, it's I not our it's problem. one person. Right. <laughs> I am against Ebola globally. Uh, and I, I am very happy that we are sending doctors to the places that can't take care of themselves and doing our best to fix them uh but yeah i will we'll i'm say, just tired of hearing about it it's like give me a new disease to be scared of I'm not you know what of that is anymore. the official jimmy curve stance on a bullet uh, grant parson just said it give me a new disease stop, to be scared of stop yeah. bothering us ebola <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was the a it's the 2014 aids that's all ebola was it's, ebola the 2014 aids problem solved yeah <laughs> <laughs> was <it> Waka. <laughs> I downloaded a gavel sound. What was that? That was a gavel. What's a gavel? <laughs> um. Well, as somebody like who has uh, spent their fair <laughs> share like a, of time, a judge bangs on. Oh, his... I thought it was like black, black, black. Remember that thing that Blocking. the judge did after uh, you got sentenced? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me specifically? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I went to jail too many times this year, you guys. Let's, is that, can we talk about that? In two, can we leave that in 2014, please? Jail. For or against? I'm, a, I'm. You know what? Did you go to jail? I went to jail three times this year. What did you go to jail? Wait, one time was you got, you were driving through... Texas, right? Yeah, and they don't like weed down there. With and weed, I, yeah. And uh, I actually found out I got a letter in the mail. Fuck, I from like I, a Christmas card. Yeah, a Christmas card from <laughs> Texas, basically saying uh, there's a warrant out for my arrest in Texas because I didn't go back to court or anything. So, if anybody <laughs> wa if anybody wants to book me in Texas, um, you know, talk. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see. I'm what probably else not going back there for a while. Did you get arrested locally? mm Hmm. I had a warrant out for my arrest. It sounds badass. So have you done any research? Like, do you know what the statute of limitations is on this charge? Or? You know what? I, I, it, was, it was a misdemeanor. Okay. So for me, I don't think federally anybody's coming after me. So as long well, as I feel like I stay out of Texas, unless like a right. bounty hunter wants to go, dog, but the bounty hunter comes after me in LA. that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to like, do, have you done some research to know how long it is before you get to go like visit Austin? Oh, I don't know. I, I assume I just don't get pulled over when I go there. That's my whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> right. But presumably that was your plan when you were there the first time and it didn't go so well. Right, so. right. So yeah, I've learned my lesson. If, <laughs> if I get pulled over over then we'll have to deal with it next time i go to texas um the second time i got arrested I'm, I'm interrupting the whole segment no that's fine okay cool um i had a warrant out for my arrest which sounds badass but it really wasn't i was urinating in public when i was drunk in like july when my best friend right. was visiting because we right. just got smashed and i was like i was peeing in a parking garage and he's like, uh, he yells at me, he goes, Grant, and I like turn around and there's just like a bike cop standing <laughs> right by me. And I like kind of peed on him a little bit when I turned around. I was like, oh, I wasn't doing anything. And he just like wrote me a ticket right there. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Hands me a ticket and just goes, pay this before your birthday. I'm just like, how do you know my birthday? And he like looked at my license, obviously. So it's just like, <laughs> pay it before the end of the month is what it was. And I just like, I never paid it because I'm like, that's not a real thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like that's how I looked at it. I looked at like like you have parking tickets, like you have outstanding parking tickets. How I kind of looked at like a urinating in public ticket. I was like, that's not a real thing. For our podcast viewers, it is absolutely a real yeah, thing. So if you're peeing in public right now, just know. <laughs> okay, I made up my mind. I am for jails, just so we have a place to put Grant when shit gets crazy. <laughs> Jails for the official <laughs> Jimmy Curve stance is for jails. Next topic: marijuana legalization. This happened in a lot of states in 2014. Yeah, there are a lot of states legalized marijuana. I'm for it. I don't smoke weed, but I am for the legalization of marijuana. Yeah, I mean it would keep me out of jail. So. <laughs> right. Uh, I, again, I just, I have to play devil's advocate here. I don't want any of my drug money going to the federal government. That's okay. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Keep your taxes off of my weed. <laughs> all right. So you yeah. would like weed to remain illegal Correct. and untaxed. But think about all the money that goes towards like schools and roads and stuff like Colorado's doing. You don't want your marijuana purchase to go towards nope. positive I, I feel ways like, to influence the community? I feel like I contribute more than enough on scratch tickets that they can just <laughs> cut and keep their hands off my weed. I think no. I, I am against, or I am for the legalization of marijuana as I am for making, like, I think victimless crimes is a farce. I think it's just a way to control people mm -hmm. and arrest like just make problems out of nothing yeah you're an idiot in public and that's two to one dealing with like somebody on weed easy to deal with dealing with some drunk yeah. asshole not pretty, so easy not so easy right the jimmy curves official stance on marijuana legalization four four you've been voted down doherty <laughs> josh you have one i'm just trying yeah. to create fun conflict yes i have one S uh, guys wearing skinny jeans. Oh, against. I am also against. I'm all about it. <laughs> I mean, as a libertarian, I assume you want people to be free to wear whatever they like under their own circumstances. I, they're free to be dumb, but I don't I like want it. them to hold their skinny. I want them to hold their legal drugs in their skinny jean pockets. <laughs> I went to go try to buy a pair of jeans two days ago at Destination Extra Large, which is where I shop for my clothes. <laughs> That's a real place? Yeah, DXL. That's what it stands for? Yes, Destination Extra Large. And their yeah. fucking jeans are skinny jeans! <laughs> like, everything was way too tight, even with a ridiculous huge waist. Yeah, you like your stuff really <laughs> loose. Though. I like baggy shit. I like it. I I wear cargo. I'm the last human being in the United States wearing cargo pants who's not homeless. <laughs> because they're fucking loose and they feel good. But, like, you cannot buy jeans with hip room. Because of this goddamn skinny jeans epidemic. It's bullshit. I hate it. I'm overruling every other opinion. <laughs> the Jimmy Curve is officially against skinny jeans. Can I can I just say I'm really happy that the like large men's clothing store is called Destination Extra Large. They have some badass clothes. It I is just, nice. That's where I got my hoodie. I'm really glad because like the I'm really happy. Official sponsor for the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> men men uh, when they go clothes shopping, don't have to be condescended to. <laughs> That's correct. As when, like, a, a, a large woman's clothing store will never be called Destination Extra Large. <laughs> no. It'll be called Lane Bryant. <laughs> or, right. yeah. I don't know. The Dress Barn. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. That's... <laughs> All right, you're right. I was wrong. You've made your point. Next issue. Uh, circumcision. Against. Um... I'm all about it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, I think that if you're going to be respectful, you should wait until they turn 18 and then let them decide. <laughs> <laughs> I This is a weird topic because it came up on an earlier podcast. And I was like, I, f I was like, I don't have an opinion on this. But J Joshua, you feel very strongly about it. I do. I used to I used to not care. And then I was for it. And now I'm totally against it. I just learned more about it. Yeah, it's all. like it's a mutilation. Yeah, it's just it's only genital mutilation. Yeah, I mean that's basically all it is. You know, yeah, I'm against that. Sorry. I mean, I really do enjoy genital mutilation <laughs> in the right circumstances. 
<laughs> I don't oh. like if I was gonna have a son though. I want to have my son have an ugly penis. I want him to have a nice penis. So the thing is, like over in Europe, they're not ugly penises. Like that's just a normal you know penis. What? This is fucking America, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. That might be a thing to look at. No, is yeah, it changing. Like, like less and less parents the best, getting their kids circumcised. Yeah, the best reason that people have to like circumcise their kid is because they don't want their kid to have a weird dick. No, in like the right. locker room. Right. Here's my question. I we've all seen that weird movie trope, or that uh, that you know sitcom trope where uh, a guy gets naked for the first time, and either the girl he's with or like the dudes in the locker room make fun of his dick for some reason. Does that really happen? Like I was naked in a lot of locker rooms, and no one has ever been like, "Ha ha! Look at Jimmy's tiny dick." Well, that's the thing. I make jokes about how my my penis, my penis is tiny, right? and I, I realized like at one point I had more penis, and <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, what, Don't no make that can, a drop. Don't no, make that a no drop. No one can see the look in your eye when you said that. It was, it was like I could have ordered a twelve-inch sandwich instead of an eight-inch sandwich. <laughs> it was so hungry for the sandwich. All right. Anyways. I mean, as a as a foreskin holder, it doesn't give you more usable penis. <laughs> uh, no, I just I mean, would feel like I have more. You know what I mean? Right. And in, in actuality, if we're going by sheer appearances, if anything, a foreskin makes your dick look smaller. Like it, it mm. creates it, it. It closes in on it and then retracts. Oh, okay, I'm against that. <laughs> I'm against that. So, so you're. So, did you just take back your whole stance? <laughs> like, you're like, yeah, definitely, definitely against circumcision. Now you're like, all right, that's bullshit. Let's, let's, the the Jimmy Curve official stance on circumcision is don't ask, don't tell. Because that always works. It's a, I, now, Jimmy, I feel like it's weird that we haven't even touched on as a member of the chosen people. The, the tribe. You haven't even addressed really your religious. Uh, uh, beliefs about uh, dick cutting atheism uh <laughs> there is no such thing as a penis <laughs> i agree my 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 atheist brethren <laughs> refuse to acknowledge it it's an uncomfortable subject around the old dinner table all right i apologize you're right you the the gavel was down i'm sorry i shouldn't have brought that's it okay sometimes you got to reopen a closed case you ready for another one yeah fire away all right miley cyrus looking like a 13 year old boy I, I, <laughs> I, and i will say right now i'm against that yeah She's, uh, and now she's all of a sudden, like, really into showing her boobs and stuff, mm -hmm. but she looks like a boy. It's weird to me. Just stop. Just That's... short hair in general? Is that what we're talking about? Like, yeah. girls having that short haircut? Or are we talking specifically Miley Cyrus? Um, yeah. I would say, I would say particularly Miley Cyrus, just because she's really, in any girl that's really into Here... showing her boobs. Here's Here... the thing. Go ahead. Well, I, I just want to say, if you have a problem with Miley Cyrus looking like a 13-year-old boy, Here's the benefit that you're not considering. Pedophiles need something legal they can jerk off to. <laughs> Who is that hurting? All right. Yeah. We're saving the children. <laughs> We're helping them be, be productive members of society. She's selling a few extra records. It's win, win, win. This is one of those issues where, boy, it sure seems that your logic is irrefutable. But I'm super uncomfortable with the way you did that. <laughs> so you 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 put a you put a thought into my head that I didn't want there. <laughs> Look, none of us want the thoughts there, but Well Dorothy makes you sad. My teenage brother that's infatuated with everything you say will even be like that he should have said that. Not cool, man. Yeah, not like, cool. The thing about Miley Cyrus is that she's just not a super attractive person. And I normally get annoyed when people I know go, oh, you know, fucking whatever actress. Because, like, every actress is gorgeous. Like, they're all beautiful. Like, uh, I, I, ha I had a nephew who was like, Megan Fox, man. I, I don't know. And I'm like, Fuck you! Like, if Megan <laughs> Fox was your server at a Denny's, you would lose your shit. Like, you'd be like, that is the hottest chick I've ever seen. I have, uh, I know somebody who claimed to have taken a body shot off of Megan Fox in high school, because he went to the same high school as her in Florida. 
Right, and he he ejaculated when he did it. I don't know. <laughs> he said she wasn't that hot in high school. See, fuck that guy. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's so stupid. Here's the thing. None of us know any person who looks like that. That's uh, here. I don't think that's true. Guys showing. I don't off. think that's true because I've seen people who I think are like movie star attractive. I think you're under. I I, I don't think you're properly estimating just how much like it's all just makeup and photoshop no i think a lot of it is but but there's still a certain level of attractiveness that gets you there what i was going to say about miley cyrus is that she's not that like she doesn't have that even with the makeup and everything else she's not a beautiful person just being being young and not fat is what she is Hmm. i think she's pretty good looking i do too yeah i do too I just want her to be less, like, I want her to be more feminine like she was before she oh, chopped her I, hair off. I think she can do whatever she wants. You oh, know, I'm, 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 all, I'm, I'm all about it. Do Go smoke joints at the VMAs or whatever you're doing at the oh my God. grind on fucking <laughs> rappers. You know what I think it is? I think <laughs> I just short It hair. seems so fake from her when she does that shit. Like, when Lindsay Lohan did it, you were like, yeah, she likes to fucking party. But yeah. when Miley Cyrus does it, it's she's like, like she's, getting she's trying to convince me that she likes to party. Yeah. It seems so fake. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't like talking about a celebrity like this. It feels stupid to me. <laughs> like, like Let's move on. on. It's like we're that just, was yours, John. Me, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we just read a People magazine, and now we're... <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got one. Can I? Can yeah, I, I fire got, away. Uh, prostitution. For it. Against it. I don't know. I'm for it. I'm. I'm. I'm all about it. As a libertarian, I think you should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I mean, I'm for it. <laughs> uh, this is another. So, like, how, are we talking about prostitution existing? Because for or against doesn't no, matter. It's no, always going no, to exist. Legal, the legalization. legalization. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Legal prostitution. Taxable, regulated, legal prostitution. With no, like, kind of, like... You know what's funny is that even even in places where prostitution is legal, it's still fucking seedy. Like, there's no way to make that less, like, dirty and dangerous. And right. Weird. Right. Well, fucking is gross. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Nailed it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. That's a tough one. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the hardest like, one. When you're talking about crimes, my question I always raise uh, uh, is, who's it hurting? Right. Who's the victim? Right, the prostitute is the victim. Is it? It's, yes. If there's like a sex ring, right? If there's no. like, and you're like, it, it, it can be. She can be a victim, but it does just because she's a prostitute doesn't make her a victim. What is she? Who's victimizing her? If she's voluntarily, society. She's it's making society. money. She's. It's a. You know. She's trading a service mutually with somebody else. What yeah, you're de- What you're just, describing is a theoretical that is not. That is rarely true. Like there's no, n- but like the reason it's rarely true is mostly because of the illegality of it, wh- which is why the legalization of it, it would be so important. Like putting pe- putting uh, like people who like do sex work in a position where they can actually receive legal protection and like police protection without immediate retribution is like a, would go a long way. No, no, no. I'm more talking about the emotional scars. Like, there's no such... Oh, well, fuck that. Who cares? There's no such... Yeah. No, there's no such thing as, like, a retired porn star who's 45 and, like, mentally well-adjusted. You don't think so? No. No? It exists. Compared to who? The percentage is super small. Oh, I'm not not saying it's not, but, like... I think people like that are gonna, you know... They, they fall into that stuff regardless you know what i mean and it's, I, I, that's that's hard to say but like if you're if you're if you're gonna go on camera and do porn there's something that's already happened to you and you're probably gonna wind up doing that it's like right. com- like comics too it's like you don't choose to be a comic it's just like right. there's something that's like a little bit kind of that fucked up with like us not all. remotely the same i i feel you don't oh, think so? i think i think it's very similar like and, and here's the the way i feel genuinely like being there a comedian can... does not deepen your scars. 
the way that prostitution does. Does working in fucking behind a fry grill for 45 years it's is that not less the same. De- is that less dehumanizing than like getting fucked for a lot of money? A lot less okay, dehumanizing. Okay, there there are male prostitutes. True. Are they just as much of a victim as female prostitutes? I don't know. The percentages are so small. I'm just the- saying I mean Come on. You guys ever been with a prostitute before? No. <laughs> Grant Parsons just raised his hand. Allegedly. Boom. Tia- nailed it. <laughs> what, what happens in Tijuana ends Ooh. up in your act three years later, you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel very strongly that sex worker says emotional trauma and that it, it that people with emotional trauma need right. help and that is harm and you feel very strongly that as an upper class white man you get to decide that for other people no how, <laughs> how, how, how is that how is that not everything we always talk about ever that's we're just it is i just feel like you're right. the one who doesn't know it i think what <laughs> when did this become about me <laughs> Uh, when when you tried to convince me that sex being a sex worker was more dehumanizing than me having a minimum wage job for the rest of my life. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm totally against Will being a prostitute. Is that what you're <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, I can't say that. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's probably good for this segment. You got one more? Oh, I got another one? I got one. I like this segment. Right. I got one. Let's, that let's I keep going. To do. Let's keep going. I'll cross the other ones off. But no, I, no, we'll keep going. The post office. I feel like we found a better way to relay information. I, I am against. A, I agree. I'm totally against. It's yeah. it's almost archaic at this point. Did you guys know that the Lincoln Post Office isn't even like they don't even do anything. They just ship all the mail to like Omaha, and then Omaha distributes it. Hmm. Like it's not even like. A, Working. It, I don't know that. I know yeah. they, they, the, the United States Post Office loses almost two billion dollars a year. See, and they just lose it. I most of the time I'm just arguing to be difficult. This is something where I have an odd, like I have an odd affection or something because I like I want the post office to exist, and people make that argument all the time, like it loses so much money. It's like. Yeah, but that's like the one service that the United States government provides me that works. It doesn't (laughs) have to make money. Like The post office delivers mostly garbage. Look at how much stuff that the post office gives you that you just throw away. A lot of it. And it loses money. It just makes no sense. Maybe I'm the only one, but I get real excited when I get my fast food coupons. I was just going to say that. like. (laughs) Every the, week. Like, internet and all that's cool, like, getting coupons on the internet and shit like that, but, like, the physical, like, I feel like we're gonna miss this, like, physical stuff once we get rid of it. It's like, going to your mailbox, getting, oh, it's, it's a bill, but whatever. It's a, yeah. To me, all that shit is a burden. Yeah. I guess I just, I, I feel like we're gonna be missing something important if we let the infrastructure just disappear for that, and we only have, like, private, like, you know carriers in order to like move things it's more efficient that way if if the post office was so great you wouldn't have fedex ups or any delivery service because they they basically picking up the slack and they're more efficient at it if you ever track something like you order something and it's ups you can track it mm-hmm. where it scans in you see it it's in this place and it's fast it's amazing how fast it is and then like typically if you get the cheapest you know if you pay the cheapest to have it delivered to your house they don't deliver it directly to your house they give it to the post office and then it says delivered to the post office and then it sits at the post office for three fucking days and Mm -hmm. then it gets to your house whereas in a ups fedex it delivers right to your house like they're just less efficient and we they deliver garbage they rarely deliver something that you couldn't get otherwise with today's technology. Do you think prisons should be privatized? Fuck no. No. It's another government institution that there is such a thing. No, they, there's private there's, prisons in yeah. one, Lancaster County. That's a private You have to prison. look at you have to look at incentive. You know what I mean? That's that like, seems a little corrupt, right? Like I just didn't know, I just wanted to know I just wanted to know how far you were going to go with like the government shouldn't be running things that a private corporation could do better. 
Oh, but there are certain things. You got to look at agendas, though. Like, yeah. When you're you're making money for keeping people locked up, that's a little like one thing's de- delivering mail, that kind of thing. But like <laughs> keeping somebody locked up and you're profiting off of them being in prison, that seems a little. Yeah, the post th- office isn't profiting ever. So you know what I mean? Like they're not even providing. I don't know. I'm t- against the post office Ooh. and also against private. Maybe uh, maybe I'm just too invested because I just bought those four cases of forever stamps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Against. Uh my, Damn it! my 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 next topic uh was uh space. Outer space. <laughs> I just think it's a funny topic. Like explore, I, I, exploration, I, or I want to go first one so that I against. so that I don't seem like I'm the one who's arguing yeah. against someone. For what are we not doing in space? We should be in space all the time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, more. God damn it! <laughs> we're all. We're... I wanted someone to be all okay. Right. Well, we'll take this. I wrote when I wrote this down. I wrote it. I wrote space, and then I was like, I should qualify that. So I wrote comma outer. Like space out, like outer space. Yeah, I think we're right. But then no, I'm, but not it, inner space. Right. You're not. You're not like. Oh, should then, we all spend a lot of time sitting in the lotus position, contemplating? So I wrote <laughs> space comma outer, but then I misread it later as space otter. So <laughs> space otters, for or against? Definitely for. I am for otters are fucking adorable. Yeah, I, space so otters really, have to be awesome. So really, you just want to send the otters to space where they can all uh, asphyxiate. And, it's uh, their choice. An infinite number, of, like the prostitutes. Correct. Yeah. Space I'm, otters, Joshua. Yeah, I'm definitely for that. What do you guys? Space <laughs> otters for. I'm not gonna let the space shit die. I'm a stoner. I love talking about space. <laughs> like sending people to Mars. How do you guys feel about that? Like, call. We're trying to call one way trip. Like people are I'm with. Up. I'm with Will. Like. Let's get into space. Yeah. What happens when a fir- the first death happens, though? Like the our we we had so many tech. Well, people are gonna die. Like, how you cool know, would it be though? You break a few eggs and make an omelet. You go up there, and not only you're one of the first people on Mars, but you're the first person buried on Mars. They saw they had that this, would be awesome. They some, name it the Joshua Vossler Memorial Cemetery yeah, statue on Mars. God, mm. dude. You gotta have some balls to go to Mars. One way trip, dude. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. You wouldn't do it. No. Hmm. I wouldn't be the what first. What if you were really high? No. Mm. I am super claustrophobic, so I could never. I would lose my shit, dude. Yeah. I, I. No. No way. I want to be the first. If there's already a colony up there, and they could show me like the sales pitch, like, hey man, we need we. Like doing stand up full time at Mars, like <laughs> nothing's illegal on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you can give me paying gigs in front of, but then you'd be doing sets in front of the same like two hundred people that are already there, and you have to come up with a new act every week, and just be like, ah, oh, we need more comics here, and we get sick of your. Jesus. No, I, I know, I and there's like just this hacky bit about like, yeah, we get it. The airlock makes a loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They just have Mars jokes. <laughs> yeah, do they charge for carry on? This is my <laughs> <laughs> deciding factor. Oh. No, like yeah, I I tried to do a bit about this, and I don't think I'll ever get it to work. But like. We should be, like, people don't want to spend money. Like, they're like, well, we can't just spend money on all this, like, space, NASA shit. Like, we got shit we got to deal with right here. It's like, we need to figure out space because we need to know how we're getting off the Earth. As soon as we <laughs> like, fucking destroy if it. If you yeah. have, yeah, if you have any value, like, if you put any value on human life, then you want to see human life continue into the stars. Because, like... <laughs> Even if, best case scenario, like, we don't get crushed by an asteroid for thousands upon thousands of years, and we just continue developing, like, eventually, you know, the, like, if we live long enough, eventually the sun's just going to explode and the un- the solar system's gonna get wiped out. So, like, we gotta start figuring out how we're getting off of this planet if you want human life to continue. Yeah, but that's like you're talking about things that are like millions of years off. Yeah, I never heard what your your did you say about the otters? You for or against that? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Do you have another one? 
I, yeah, I do. Do it. Fast and Furious movies. Oh, oh they got to be done after this one. Against. Man. You got to be. <laughs> it's that's my closer. <laughs> Can I, I? I don't know if you guys have follow the movie news as much as I do. Uh, have you guys happened to hear that uh, Fast, the the director of like all the Fast and Furious movies after like the second one, I believe. So like three through seven, uh, has been signed on as the director of the new Star Trek film. Really? Yeah. So it'll be horrible. The second, you know, one there's horrible. a lot of there's a there's a lot of opinion out there that the Fast and Furious movies three through seven are the good ones. And that, like, the first two are just kind of schlock. Like, I don't know. I haven't seen most of them. Oh. I haven't seen the fifth or sixth one. I don't know. Yeah. But, like... Who told you that? Vin Diesel? <laughs> read, read reviews online. There are a lot of people who think they're just modern classics. It's crazy. I like the third. I don't know, man. <laughs> Tokyo. Was that Tokyo Drift? Tokyo. <laughs> I just love Asians. I'm anything that has Asians in it. I'm I'm all about the Asians. We're big in Asia town. Yeah, we have we have listeners in Asia. Are you are you serious? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thailand, Japan, Fo- Japan. Follow me, especially if you're a young, attractive Asian woman. What's your Twitter handle, Grant? Uh, it's at Grant Parsons underscore. Cause some asshole. It's your <laughs> blood. Some asshole has Grant Parsons. His name is Bob on Twitter. You know how you've got like your handle and then you have your name. This has got Grant Parsons' handle. His name is Bob, and he's never tweeted. <laughs> I've been on Twitter for, like, almost five years. You sure that's some... not Bob Garnett? Just, like, scooped it no, up? No, this is before, <laughs> was like... long before I knew Bob Garnett. Oh. This is... But, yeah, I, I even offered to give him GrantParsons.com because I own that. The Jimmy Curve's official stance on Fast and Furious he... movies is against. Against, yeah. The, I think the official stance is... There's no food in that <laughs> bin. Yeah, that's, that's my bit. Or, I would say any more. I'm cool with what they've made now. I think now that Paul Walker's dead, he don't even make any more. No more. I have one more. Let's do it. Cable or satellite providers? Moving to a town that gets Google Fiber. Ooh. I'm for that. You know, I have a friend who has it, though, and he's just like, it's a goddamn nightmare. It's like dealing with them is terrible. What is uh, why? I don't is, know. That is, was like my last hope. He what said was, the service was bad. What is Google it? Fiber? What is that? I don't know it's what that a is. it's a fiber optic network that yeah. like Google is trying to position themselves up as basically an ISP through a new type of uh, cable that's like super high capacity. Well, I I pick this much like the post office. I don't think it's some. I don't think they provide a service that's necessarily needed dying. anymore. I think network television is dying. I think cable itself is dying. Yeah. I think everything's moving online. Yep. I think if they don't embrace um, more internet stuff, like you see that with Comedy Central. I don't really mess with any other networks besides Comedy Central, but I like that I can go to Comedy Central's website, and if I want to watch a show, like South Park, you could watch all the... I don't have cable, mm-hmm. so I just watch all the South Parks online. Not anymore, you can't. They just signed an exclusivity deal with Hulu. But like you, you have Hulu though that provides. But yeah, you could pay yeah. provide, six bucks. Netflix. You, they provide content that you want, opposed to cable or satellite, where you're essentially paying mostly for stuff you don't even watch. It's and not the ass. Usually. Yeah, and you're it's and it's a lot, a lot of money. Of money. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think like HBO is kind of sticking it to cable and satellite companies next year because they are going to provide a service much like Netflix where you can get HBO just purely online without any cable well, they already or satellite have that. It's called HBO Go. Right, but you have to right. you have to be a subscriber of of like Time Warner or Dish or oh, whatever. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that's how yeah. that works. Right. Yeah. Well, you have to have a TV service that allows you to get HBO because you have to have HBO to get oh, an HBO Go. Oh, it's not password. full. But next year they're, they're going to switching over. Yep, that's so smart. Yeah. Oh. And they said they're going to lower the prices so they can oh, compete with Netflix. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good for them. S- stuff like that. Like, it's like that's, 30 bucks a month or yeah. something right now. Oh, it's crazy how much like yeah. cable and, and satellites. In, in, I meant like the HBO Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's awesome. That's the direction we're going. It needs to be faster. We're all and, on board with that? Hell yeah. I am. I you am, said uh, you were against it first. Oh, no, I, I said I don't know. No, right. I think you just said cable companies, and I was like, against? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them! <laughs> Time Warner Cable can suck my D. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm totally cool going to a purely online-based way of watching video content. 
I mostly watch sports, so, like, I have the full sports package, and I watch a lot of sports, but, like... Wouldn't it be nice if you had, like, a full sports package online that you could well, pay? Well, but they they do that because NFL Network, you, you can pay 90 bucks and you can't watch games live, but for $90, you can watch every NFL game. You just have to wait three hours after it's oh, over. But you can't watch it live. That's No, you can't watch it live because because the, the NFL package is still, like, $500 to, yeah. to watch to get, like, NFL Sunday ticket. But if you're willing to wait three hours after the game to watch it, which how, most people DVR sports anyway. Like really? you can you you can watch it uh, in what's called I can't remember what they call on the NFL.com site, but it's it, it it they edit the games down to where it's just the plays. So it's like forty minutes. You watch a full game and it edits out everything in between the plays. There's no That's commercials, cool. no guys running back up to the line of scrimmage, no huddles, no. Wow. Cut to the sideline, watching the coach pace up. It's just play, play, yeah, play, like play, 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 fun, play, play. You definitely it's can awesome. watch it. I mean, you'll be able to watch it live. I mean, that's they're more no. Like if the, if if cable went away, you would. Yeah, they're just at they're basically on their. There's no need to right now. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more. One more. We're gonna close on this. Okay. Last topic: the definitive Jimmy Curve stance on a pizza without red sauce. I'm all about it. Sure. Against. Against. I'm Wait. against all car- carbo. I'll say this right now. I'm against all <laughs> carbohydrates, including pizzas, pastas, cookies, and cake. <laughs> Why? Because it makes me fat. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. This has been our last episode of the year. Thank you very much to our extra special guest, Grant Parsons. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having Yay! me. Catch him at Zoolaria Sunday at 8 o'clock. Yeah. 8 o'clock. Before he leaves town, that's going to be... <laughs> well, the show starts at 8 o'clock. Grant usually stumbles in around 8.20, 8.25, something like that. Uh, so uh, go check him out. I'm not on any shows coming up. Do you guys have anything? Nothing. Come by Duffy's and buy us drinks. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you guys had a good 2014, and I hope you have an even better 2015. Uh, So for Joshua Vossler. Hey. uh. (laughs) (laughs) And Will Doherty. Yeah. uh, um. (laughs) This is Jimmy Putnam saying. uh, (laughs) Yeah.